I want to get down to brass tacks. I want to be very, very specific here. This illness, what does it feel like? You mentioned it's painful. It is. There's a tightness in my chest, difficulty breathing, and pain. Burning pain. The pain spreads everywhere. It sounds horrible. Does it hurt right now? There's always some discomfort, yes. Electricity is everywhere in the modern world. But I very much appreciate the indulgence of the panel for their accommodation here today. I can handle this fine. Right, so with the lights out, you don't feel them? If the current's not flowing, no. Oh, well, sorry about the exit signs. I guess they couldn't kill those for you. Well, they're not drawing much current, and they're far away. <sighs> Intensity drops off with distance, per the inverse square law. Okay, whoa, inverse square, I'm not a physicist. Could you dumb that down a shade for me? The farther away it is, the stronger the source needs to be to have an effect. Got it, got it. So if I had a small battery safe from a watch or something, and I got it close to you, close to your skin, you'd know. I would feel it, yes. Can you feel more current coming from any particular direction right now? From that back wall? Or uh, from over there? Or up through the floor? Can you tell us where the nearest source is right now? Jimmy, do you have something in your pocket? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. My cell phone. From this distance, you should feel it, and you don't, do you? Mr. McGill, you were warned to leave your electronics outside. It's all right. It's all right. May I? Just as I thought. There's no battery in here. You removed the battery. <laughs> That's a sorry little trick, isn't it? Yeah, you got me, Chuck. <laughs> Dead to rights. I removed the battery. Objection. Sustained. Y you've taken all the leeway you're getting, Mr. McGill. Wrap it up fast. God, Jimmy. <sighs> Don't you know by now this is real? I feel this. It's a physical response to stimuli. It's not a quirk. What do I have to do to prove it to you? I don't know, Chuck. Could you reach into your breast pocket and tell me what's there? <laughs> what now? Can you tell the court what that was? battery. Mr. Chairman, please. You recognize that man in back? His name is Huel Babineau. He's on our witness list. You bumped into him in the stairway. He'll testify he planted this fully charged battery on you over an hour and a half ago. Hour and 43 minutes. An hour and 43 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Babineau. And you felt nothing. No, 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 it's a trick. It has enough to be. is enough. I submit that Mr. McGill's mental illness is a non-issue. If he were schizophrenic, Schiz it wouldn't take away from the fact that the I defendant- I am not crazy! I am not crazy. I know he swapped those numbers. I knew it was 1216. One after Magna Carta, as if I could ever make such a mistake. Never, never. I just, I just couldn't prove it. He, he covered his tracks. He got that idiot at the copy shop to lie for him. Mr. McGill, please, you don't have to go You think anything. this is something, you think this is bad. This, this chicanery, he's done worse. That's billboard. Are you telling me that a man just happens to fall like that? No, he orchestrated it. Jimmy, he defecated through a sunroof. And I saved him. And I shouldn't have. I took him into my own firm. What was I thinking? He'll never change. He'll never change ever since he was nine. Always the same. Couldn't keep his hands out of the cash drawer. But not our Jimmy. Couldn't be precious Jimmy stealing them blind. And he gets to be a lawyer? What a sick joke. I should have stopped him when I had the chance. And you, you have to stop him. You... I apologize. 
all the same weight? Within a quarter gram. Do you have a scale? <laughs> Take your pick. Got out of count? You get five. Don Hector gets six. He's expecting six. And that's what I'm gonna bring. Took the five, then one more. What is it? Did he piece himself? No, he wasn't there. It was just disguise. So what happened? They called him, and uh, while we were waiting to see what he'd say, one of the guys put a gun to my head. They put a gun to your head? Uh -huh. It's no big deal. Leonel? Go outside, see what he found out. Yeah. <clears throat> so, your father, he show up. Where does he get his upholstery? From uh, the distributor. Oh, where is the distributor? Jalisco. Jalisco. I want a new way to get my stuff over the border. A legitimate business. Right, but the chicken man... Temporary. I want a new front, my own. Don Hector, my father is a simple man. He is not in the business. You will teach him. Don Hector, please. Don't worry. I take good care of Papi. He make money a lot more than with his little sewing machine. Leonel talked to a guy in Los Lunas. Looks like Tuco knifed the guy. But he definitely broke a guard's jaw. They got him in solitary. What? All he had to do was six months. He'd be in there forever. <laughs> there. 